And a very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Issues and Attitudes. My name is Jeff Owens, Director of WEIU TV and Radio. My co host is Kate Slaughter. Thank you, Jeff. Good seeing you, Kate, and making a return appearance. Dennis Malik. Right. Thank you for having me. Dowden, the Fine Arts Center, Director of Programming, Publicity, and Promotions, and everything else, right? Yep, that's, that's the full long title. <laughs> All right. Well, appreciate you coming in today. I know you had a crazy weekend, so let's just go back to Saturday. I know Radius wrapped it all up, but there was a lot of other things going on in Dowden. Yeah, Saturday was a, a full day, a really busy day for the center. We started off early in the morning with a really uh, well-attended and exciting open house for the campus. We then moved into the Aca, the first Aca Fest, Acapella Fest for the um, uh, for this region, and that was uh, really that went really well. Uh, a lot of excited high schoolers here for the acapella festival, and then uh, three of the groups got to perform right before uh, Radius on stage. They opened up for them, and then Radius took the stage, and it was just an exciting night after that. They played pretty well. Was it good? Uh, fantastic group, phenomenal. Uh, everybody was cheering, dancing in their aisles. It was a fun time at the Dowden Fine Arts Center this past week. And we usually have you on a little earlier in the season so we can talk about the entire year. But uh, So we'll kind of go forward as the show goes on and talk about some yeah. of the things that are happening. But I know a couple of other artists that are getting ready to do, or acts that are coming up you really want to talk about is Grupo Bella and She Loves Me. So let's talk yep. about each those, of those. Those are the last two big events, we uh, kind of down to premiere events that we have for this fall semester. So first up is Grupo Bella. That'll be Saturday, October 26th. Uh, this is a, a great group. They formed in about 2011. Uh, they're out of LA and um, just excellent musicians. They do traditional mariachi instrumentation, uh, and, and uh, but they they cover all sorts of genres and different cultures with with their style of music. And this this is uh, we're partnering with the Latin American Heritage Month activities uh, committee. So this is part of that uh, uh, that Hispanic Heritage Month um, celebration. And uh, don't miss this one. I think tickets are going to go fast for them. This is a, just an exciting, excellent young uh, group out of L.A. And then after that, just uh, not even a week, after that, on, on opening on Halloween. Ooh. But it's not a scary show. It's a fun uh, musical called She Loves Me. Uh, and if anybody out there has ever seen, like, a uh, uh, You've Got Mail with Tom Hanks, um, then, then it's, it's kind of the same concept with this show. It's just it's fun. It's quirky. It takes place in the 1930s, uh, in a European European perfumery. That's not easy to say <laughs> really fast. Uh, but this has um, two weeks, so it's October 31st through November 2nd, and then again the following week, Thursday through Sunday, October 7th through the 10th. And so that's going to be a really fun show. Uh, our musicals are always fantastic the theater department and the musical theater uh area have been doing phenomenal work these last few years so. no they seem like uh it seems like great work honestly uh, how do you decide which per events and performances to bring to the center like these these groups so uh we work with the theater department so they kind of they pick the show and then we, we do what we can to help boost it up and, and mm -hmm. really bring out the full musical um extravaganza if you will but for the other premiere events uh just Two weeks ago, I was at a conference in Indianapolis for a week, and we went uh, all day from 9 a.m. to midnight, and we were meeting with agents. We were seeing 15 minutes. We were seeing 15 minute snippets of the uh, of of shows. We must have seen hundreds of different of acts. So we then go from there um, and kind of piecemeal through it and see what kind of genres we would like to really promote the f coming year and what groups really stood out to us so we've got i've got several of really really good shows in my head for next season so stay tuned in april for that <laughs> one <laughs> so you're always working a year out basically right yeah so i we'll have the season planned by january so yeah, yeah we're about we are always working well ahead other thing that's happening this week for um the um for the Down to Fine Arts Center is Thursday is the Scholastic Bowl 2024, the Coles County Clash, uh, the Brains edition, I say. You know? yeah. so oh, I remember doing that. And, yeah. and, and <laughs> what will happen Thursday? Well, that's always a really fun event for us to do. We do that in our um, our, the our main theater there, and um, Connor and the crew do a great job, and uh, I think Dean England is is, is doing the um, the questioning again, and that's always just a fun activity for Matt Toon and Charleston students to come, and it's a nice professional setting, and it's a fun time. And and these are some really smart kids. I don't know really any of the answers to the questions they ask, so um, <laughs> and neither did I. Know, it always so. makes me feel real good. But it's a it's these are really really smart, and you can really see the uh, just how uh, wonderful our um, 
K through 12 education is in the region. So, yep, and that'll replay. By the way, if you can't be in uh, down on Thursday, WEIU TV at noon on a Saturday, and, and so it's a quick turnaround for us, but we get it on so people can immediately kind of have that whole feel for the weekend of all yeah. that's going on. Yeah, cool. Okay. Uh, I was going to say, uh, what are some of the challenges that you face in programming and uh, promoting events at the Dowden the Fine Arts Center? I would say uh, the biggest challenge is, uh, you know, we are we're part of of, of the the campus and the, and the different departments. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's for me, it's not just finding acts that will necessarily just be, you know, uh, these. I mean, they're, they're amazing shows and a lot of things. But I also want to be able to in kind of um, enrich the academics of the departments as well. So I like to schedule groups that will do master classes, uh, new and emerging artists that can really speak to our students who are, you know, about to graduate, about to go into the professional field so that they get uh, a good understanding of what they're about to get into. So mm. I see the Doudna not only as a, a place to go for your entertainment in the region, but also a place that our shows as, a, as something that enhances and enriches our academic uh, goals. For someone who doesn't understand what a master class was, could you explain that to them, please? So what we'll do is we'll bring the group in and we'll um, we'll pay them to come in early. They'll uh, they'll set up and they'll do uh, basically a class for our students or the public. It's always open to the public and it's free. Uh, so they will talk about what it's like to get into the industry in in their particular area, or they can do a particular master class on their instrument if it's for a specific, like a flute studio things like that oh, okay. or for an acting class uh they'll do like a movement and stage acting um, and so it, it, it's a wide variety of things but it's a way to uh, further educate our students from a different different perspective from professionals in the field and what they're doing right now that's cool hmm. um what if someone from the public you know this you know joe below sitting in oakland illinois today goes i've got a an act i saw or I, I know of a local act and is it okay for them to contact you and, and and throw an idea by you how's that work oh no i i love it when people uh send me ideas in fact if you uh we're out to see last year's Red Hot Chili Pipers. That was just uh, a, a guest of ours who threw that idea at me. I found them. I thought they were great, and I booked them. And <laughs> and what I really like about it is if if someone if one person sees them and in, is in sending out to me, I know that that's probably something they'll go to. They'll bring their friends to. They'll get excited about. It. They'll help me promote in ways that I could never do um, uh, on my own. So. You know, that's to me, that's really important because I want the public to be able to see Doudna as a, uh, a cultural entertainment center for the East Central Illinois area. And folks who don't know that much, Doudna, it's just not one concert hall. You nope. are made up of so many different rooms and, and you know, and, and kind of spaces. So can you talk about what all people can see when they visit or only maybe not know about Doudna? Well, yeah, Doudna is, first off, it's a beautiful building. If you've never been in there, it's, it's a fantastic modern architecture. And we actually have four large performing venues. We have our concert hall, uh, which is the clad in all copper. It's really beautiful and warm when you walk in there. And then we have our proscenium theater space, which we can house anything in that space. The stage is huge. Um, we have, technically speaking, we can do anything we want in that venue. Um, and uh, then we move on to our black box, which is very large for a black box. But that's also where you can see this week, if you want to see it, we have Hol- Miss Holmes and Miss Watson, apartment 2B, playing there. Uh, and it opens Thursday through Sunday. Um, get your tickets now. <laughs> and um, it's going to be a fun, that's a fun show as well. But a nice uh, uh, play on an all-female cast of, uh, of the Holmes, Holmes, se- yeah. Sherlock Holmes series. But so that's our black box. And then we have a... One of my favorite spaces when I was doing the technical is the recital hall. It's all glass, but when we bring our lights and stuff in there, we change the color of the glass to fit the mood of the piece behind it for some of our bigger shows. Uh, it's a beautiful space. The acoustics are second to none in all four venues. So, um, yeah, you have to just come out and see multiple things if you really want to get a full feel for our center. And the center is open during the week, so people can take tours and walk around and get a feel yeah, for mo- it? Yeah, uh, we're always open. Uh, the venues are usually locked, but if you want a tour, you just stop by the box office or come up to the uh, Doudna office on the second floor, and we'll be happy to stop what we're doing and give you a little tour. Cool. Now, what if you had someone like me? See, like I had a, I used to play in a lot of bands uh, back in my undergrad, uh, my other school. 
and sometimes I still want to get involved, you know. I still want to kind of play the piano a little bit or play the guitar. Are there any, like, practice rooms for people like me that want to do that, really? Or? Yes, we, we have a ton of practice rooms downstairs. Hmm. Uh, you might have to check. I believe you'll have to check them out from the music office, but you can just ask for it and check out a key and, and go ahead and, and play. Um, you know, we, we encourage that. So, um yeah, feel free. Go on. Have some fun. <laughs> so you really do have a lot of stuff to yeah. offer. Yeah. We also have, in, in, which is really appealing, I think, uh, to a lot of people, we have those, our smart practice room. So it actually takes what you play into a microphone and pumps it back in so it can sound like any hall you can think of. Oh, really? And that's cool. For when you're practicing, if you can't practice on the stage you're supposed to be on. So. Yeah. Um, let's continue to talk about some of the other things for this fall. Yeah. We got tons of things, you know, and we, we talked about Grupo and She Loves Me and, and, the, and the Watson Homes, but there's other events you're going to have, you know, professional and free and stuff. So talk about some of the fall highlights. Yeah, so uh, just this month alone, I believe we have 28 different events. So that's just October, I mean. So it's, uh, it's going to be a busy time. We have, I believe we have, uh, tonight we have a lecture. It's our uh, Riccio lecture from our history department. Tomorrow we have... Jose uh, Gabo, he is, uh, sorry, that's my phone. <laughs> he is, um, I should know better. I tell people to silence their phones all yeah, the time. That happens all um, the time. Um, right. so, so, uh, the anyways. That's fair. <laughs> uh, uh, Jose Gabo, he's a, um, a Brazilian guitarist. He's got a faculty recital tomorrow that's free and open to the public. And then we go into uh, next week. We have, um, we've got, well, not, maybe not next week, but we have, Oh, this Friday we have the Wind Symphony and uh, concert band performing at 7.30. And then Sunday we have our choirs performing uh, uh, at 4 o'clock. And then next week we have, I believe, jazz combos, or that might be the week after. And then we just keep going. Like, there's just no – there's – if. It, if you, if you don't think there's anything to do, you're not looking hard enough because the Dowden always has something going on. So. On your website, everybody can go kind of go through the schedule and you yeah, can see so all the different things that are all the way through next, basically spring, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. We have everything on there. And then as they come up or, or pop up, we add them right then and there. So if you go to eiu.edu slash Doudna and you can go to our event calendar and you can see everything that's going on. Now for someone who maybe wants to watch a season, can you, is there season tickets available so we can get, get the, everything they want? Yeah. Well, the season ticket uh, has passed just because we are about four shows in now. Yeah. Uh, but if you can still get a, um, a group rate right, with, with, with anything you want. So, and that's just four people. So if it's two couples, you save $5 off of each ticket. So your ticket price goes from general public from 25 to 20. Or cool. students, if you just bring, bring your whole floor, if you're an RA, you know, schedule hmm. it and you go down to $10 a ticket. So it, we, we do what we can to really make it a very cost-effective center for you to come out and enjoy the arts. So. You now you talked a little bit, little bit about this earlier, but I want to touch back on it. Uh, so uh, what strategies do you use to attract diverse audiences to the center's events, necessarily just talking about the cultural diversity? So with that, we try to, we try to, act, uh, we try to interact with different groups on campus to help bring that in. Uh, this year we have Group of Bella. We, in the past we have we brought in uh, like Alvin Ailey, which is a, a really phenomenal uh, mm -hmm. African American dance company. We uh, last year we brought in um, an LGBTQ artist, uh, Mariel Craft. So we're we're constantly working to um, to have and an, an specifically a diverse season as much as possible, as much as it'll fit. A lot of times, you know, when you said about the difficulties, it's once we book our departmental events, it's if these artists have dates that are open and within the window that we can actually <laughs> provide for them. Uh -huh. So it's always a, it's always a kind of a, a juggling act of calendar dates and, and uh, moving things like that. But so that's usually how we try to, um, again, coordinate and, and have diverse audiences. Oh, no, I understand. Now, do you shut down over the, like the holiday break or do you can stay open through the holidays and reopen in January? How's that work? So, yes. Yeah, so we, we are typically on the Eastern calendar, um, okay primarily because our, our crew is all students and they're not here, <laughs> so it'd be really hard to do anything. But we, uh, so right after our holiday fest, which will be uh, the last week of classes this week, uh, December 5th through the 8th, uh, we will basically kind of wind down because then it's finals. We won't have any events because we want students to be able to study. And then uh, we're done until January. We come back January um, and then 24th, we have our first uh, show of the spring semester, and that's gonna be Einstein. Uh, that'll be a fun one. Uh, we're actually going to do a school show on the 23rd and then the public show on the 24th. So uh, if you know a, uh, a, a teacher out there and they're looking for a fun STEM performance to do, this is going to be right up their alley. They, uh, he has worked with the Illinois uh, Board of Education, and so it fits those STEM 
protocols for his show and uh, he's a phenomenal actor, and it's going to be a good time. That's cool. So. Also in the spring, I know we, you have Chanticleer, which I don't know much about, but they've won Grammys. Yep. And The Weaklings is a Beatles tribute. Yes, game. The Weaklings. It's a, it's a Beatles tribute. And, and I've, when, I, when I looked at them, I, you know, I really wanted to make sure that we were staying you know, authentic and not just, not just kind of a tribute-ish thing, but like uh, something more unique than that. So well, that's Because every, everybody's seen 1964 like 12 times. So right, right. It's, so it's, wanted, it's, it's, it's nice to see some of the new Beatles. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I had a lot of um, uh, friends of mine who are, uh, if you know Dan Cruz, big Beatles fan, so uh, <laughs> and things like that. So we, I'd have people listen to them without seeing them, and, and they couldn't tell if it, you know, they couldn't tell if it was the Weaklings or the Beatles. And so this is a really great group. They sound phenomenal, and it's going to be a fun time for that one uh and then um so yeah if you if you're a beatles fan or like any type of beatles-esque kind of music because they have some of their own as well uh this is a show for you don't miss this one it's gonna probably go real fast so and then uh chanticleer is like you said grammy winning um and they are traditional vocals uh like more classical vocalists and one fun thing is we just got them set up to perform with our uh, choirs so our oh, choirs will get oh, to perform okay. with them which will be a great uh, experience for those students so uh we're moving forward with that as well and one of the other things if you haven't been to Dowden yet this year we have brought back our beverages so and our Dowden a cup so now you can uh, get a Dowden a cup get a beverage and take it into the show with you to help enhance your experience with us so oh, that's nice. cool Fun times. Um, one of the things in the past we've always talked about, even you and even when Dan Cruz was sitting over yeah. there, is that it used to be getting people to Dowden was a little bit more difficult. Now Dowden really stands out in kind of the the, the 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 fields that you run. So is it is it easier now to when we when you say Dowden, do, do the acts still just say, "Oh, I want to play there. I've heard about it." Isn't that, does that mean, and how does that make you feel? It's got to make you feel good. I mean, the smile just came on your face when I said that. Well, yeah, um, the. Every now and then we get good word of mouth, and, and everywhere we go, the performers have always said, this is great, we want to come back, we want to come back. But there are so many groups out there that still have, you know, when I go to these conferences, they don't, they don't know where we are, they haven't seen us, but when they take a look at us online and they take a look at some of the pictures of us, then, yeah, they get very excited to want to come and perform here. Um, and what I have seen, though, is agents really, really coming back time and time again. Hey, we, our last group had a good time. Here's some more groups, uh, you know. Uh, and so we, we are getting well known out in the in the performing arts field uh, with a lot of different groups. One of the again challenges is, you know, it's uh, our largest hall is just 568 seats, which is perfect for us here at Eastern. But there's some other groups that you know it's it's hard for them to look at us because it's just not a big enough venue. So. Um, that's one of the challenges, one of the things that we work against and, and that I continually try to work with their agents to say, no, you know, it might not be a big venue, but it's a great house. It's going to be a fantastic audience, and it's going to be something you want to perform in. It's a space you will want to come back to. So, and, and we've had that before where people ask to come back to record a live album because our hall is so acoustically perfectly uh, pitched. Um, or uh, like the Entrio when they came back because they wanted to do their world premiere here. So yeah, we are starting to really grow and become well known in the in the uh, performing world. Hmm. Uh, I was gonna say uh, we talk a lot about uh, short term goals. Of course, you know you said you're probably planned out for the next year. You know maybe two years. I don't know. Uh, but I wish. <laughs> of course. Uh, do you have? But do you ever think about like uh, maybe long term long term goals necessarily? Like maybe five, ten years in the future. Like what do you want for down to? Uh, yeah, so uh, in terms of long-term goals, so we, we'll plan year to year. Uh, what I'd like to, with our acts, because we, we can only plan so far forward, uh, oh, right. depending on the academic schedule. But long-term goals for us, for, and what I would like to see is really, um, you know, as we grow as a name with artists, I want to get away. I want people to start say, seeing Doudna in the East Central Illinois area, hearing it, seeing our posters and going, I know that that's going to be a good show because it's at the Down the Fine Arts Center. And we've never done anything bad. When I talk to our patrons, they love everything we do. And so I want, I want that same recognition now with the people of our local regional communities. Mm -hmm. um, because I still hear people who, are, who come here when I, when I invite different high schools like Lawrenceville. And they're, oh, I didn't know this was here. This is a really <laughs> cool building. And so that's what I would like to get away from. I would like people to say, Doudna. 
what's going on? I'm, I want something to do this weekend. Let's check out Doudna. Let's see what they have going on. That's, okay. that's a great answer and, and true. Um, one of the other things that we're doing to, with you this, this for the month of October, which uh, really starts this week, is WEI is doing a membership drive, and Doudna has, uh, has given us some tickets. Yep. And so if you want to, you'll hear a lot about it on all social media, but we want to thank you publicly about that. And it'll be a fun time. So if you become a new member of WEIU in October, you get two tickets to uh, any concert that's you know past the date you buy your membership, mm-hmm. uh, two tickets to an e- upcoming EIU football game, and then you get EIU's WEIU's passport, which is access to PBS programming for an entire year. So it's kind of a neat entertainment package. So thank you, and uh, that's kind of the first uh, word is out right now, breaking news, go. that that's oh, going to yeah. be pushed tomorrow. So thanks, Dan. <laughs> uh, thanks, Dan. I'm going back in time. Uh, thanks okay. to Dennis. <laughs> you look so much alike, I can understand. Um, but no, it's no. we're very happy to help you. Uh, we really want to support, so everybody please go out there and become a member, and um, yeah, get your tickets to Doubt and help support our local All station. of us, yeah. yeah. Um, do you ever take, have you ever taken any risks on an artist you were a little iffy about, but then they came and they did well? Or is, were you ever nervous about something? You know, I'm, I'm <laughs> nervous about all of it. Um, uh, but, no, I um, you know, there's, there's different artists I've taken risks on. I just thought that their music was very unique and um, uh, new and you know, uh, hits and misses. You know, uh, we had uh, a couple years ago uh, Ensemble McNawoosh come in, and it was orchestra with hip hop, and hmm. something I'd never seen. They did a really good job. The attendance was not great because people, um, you know, that was right. It's still early on and after the pandemic. I think people still weren't really willing to risk something if it wasn't <laughs> something they knew about. Or, or um, so, uh, I guess that's the other big challenge is, uh, you know, getting people to take risks on something that they maybe haven't seen before or haven't heard of but um and that's that's what we would really like people to do because there's a lot of great artists out there not just who you hear on um you know your regular spotify station or you know the, the taylor swifts of the world but there are so many fantastic artists out there and we bring them through here and then they they go on to become big names from time to time so you mm-hmm. know you can say i saw them here first so make sure you just always come to the Doubt now. There you go. Uh, Say, how does the center incorporate feedback from the community and just attendees in its programming? Like, how do you really manage that? So we're always open to the public. We have comment cards at our box office. um, And if you fill one out, you get a free Doubtna sticker. So there you go. Um, (laughs) So we're always, I'm always willing to take input. Uh, People email us. You can email us at doubtnaticks or Anyway, at eiu.edu. <laughs> um, I forgot. I was going website, and I was. I know it happens to me all the time. So. <laughs> um, so you can always email us there. I answered a few questions this morning already. Uh, we have, um, you know, we have our e-blast that goes out once a month, and you can reply to that, and that'll come back to me. And you know, so we're we're constantly trying to get feedback, and you know, I'm always open to to anything that people would like to talk about. Um, you know, and and so you know we're. We're going to try probably change a few things up this coming season, so stay tuned. Uh, we're going to try to make things easier for our our patrons to um, buy their tickets and continually um, be able to see whatever it is they want at a really easy way. So, um, yeah. We have a few minutes left with Dennis Malik today down to Fine Arts. Uh, one of the things, Dennis, I've, I've noticed, and I, and I want to get your opinion on, lots more live music now making and reappearances at Coles County area venues. I mean, for a while there, even before COVID, it seemed like there wasn't a lot of live music being played. Yeah. But post-COVID, people like to get out. Is that good for Down that there's more people out there performing yeah. in the area? Yeah, no, that's, that's great. And, you know, I'm seeing it... Um, like downtown on the square, I'm seeing it across the street from Old Main at I, uh, Ike's, and uh, you know, that's fantastic. I want people to go out there and enjoy live music and, and support these artists because this is what they need. Um, you know, uh, when I was at the conference, it was there's a lot of talk. Artists are really struggling right now too because uh, it's it's just it was really hard for obviously the entertainment world during the pandemic and coming back from it. Um, getting that same excitement and getting people to, to really want to go out and, um, you know, with, with how mm-hmm. tight budgets are these days, you know, yeah. spend money on the unknown. And so that's what right. we really want to encourage. And, you know, that's why we try to keep our prices as low as possible and, and encouraging people to come and support these artists and get their name, help get their name out there. Okay. Say, so, uh, can you share a memorable moment or success story from your time working at Doudna? Ooh, good question. <laughs> uh, wow. 
well, I've been there since we opened in 2008, so <laughs> there's been a lot of moments. But um, I would say uh, one of the m- a big memorable moment for me was when we had Molly Ringwald there. Oh, uh, yeah, everybody! I loves just Molly. <laughs> I just had uh, I just had my daughter Aubrey at the time, and uh, so I got a picture with her all dressed in pink with Molly Ringwald, and that was really cool. Um, but you know, show wise, one of ones that stands out to me is always high art that we did early on because that. I learned so much when it comes to like rigging and and technical work on that show. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, one of the recent ones I would say really was Mariel Craft that we brought in last year. That was one of the best concerts uh, I think I had seen in a while. Like they're all great, but she really stood out. She was so engaging. It was just her on stage. Um, And, but it was such an amazing performance. So if you have not heard Mariel Craft, look her up she is fantastic her music is fantastic so any other thing that you want to talk about say that we didn't get to that you know you wanted to help talk about here today on issues and attitudes um well i you know we we have more shows than the four that i think that we mentioned so you know if we have a second we have our um uh, our 65th annual this year jazz festival 65 65 years of the jazz festival and that's going to feature another grammy a two-time grammy winner that's chad uh chad lb Chad Lefkowitz Brown, and he uh, he has recorded with Taylor Swift and Billy Crystal and Man. Don Henley and you name it. He is the uh, person right now with when it comes to saxophone. Like he he's your go-to performer if you need saxophone on your record or your mm-hmm. album. So don't miss him. And then we have a lot of our own um, faculty members in the next premiere show after that, which is the Afro Caribbean Jazz Collective. Um, I think we have three faculty or two faculty members in that group. Uh, again, another great uh, and fan- it's going to be a really wonderful show. Uh, these are really talented musicians um, who are putting together this really cool Afro Caribbean jazz um, concert. So, hmm. uh, and then we talked about the other ones. And then don't miss us on the Holiday Fest or the Spring Fest. So Holiday Fest is December fifth through eighth. Spring Fest is April twenty fourth through twenty sixth. Uh, we always have fantastic food trucks and goodies for you to buy, especially the Holiday Fest. If you need a one-of-a-kind item for that one person <laughs> that you can never find anything to buy for, this is the place to go because these are all handcrafted by local artisans here in the area, and you can pick one up, and it supports the art department student scholarship. So 40% of what you buy goes right back into the pockets of students, which is very important and, and wonderful for us. Huh. You almost took us right to the, when we're done. We have about 30 seconds left. So <laughs> I did it. Uh, a dream act you, that you could bring w- within budget there that you would love to see. Oh, man. That's Ooh, a good one. That is a good one. So real <laughs> quick, uh, I'm a theater back, musical theater background guy, so I'm going to go with – like just this a full production of like West Side Story, just bringing them in and doing a full blowout huh. show. All right, if someone awesome. gets to hold of you, down to tickets at eiu.edu, the best way. Down to ticks, uh, www.downandticks.com is the best way to get tickets, and eiu.edu slash Dowden is the best way to stay informed. That's Dennis Malley from Dowden. Thanks, Dennis, for being here. We appreciate Thank all you. you do for us. I appreciate it. Thank you.